Okay, so choosing a research topic. So how do we do this? Okay, so if you are a teacher sa high school, for example, um, paano po ba, sige magtanong nga po, okay, paano po ba yung proseso niyo? Sa school po. Um, kasi iba po sa college, kasi usually pag sa college, um, siguro experience namin nila JP, sa kanila mama ko ni sa UP, Uh, we, we would join a group, may research advisor, meron na silang program. So technically, yung topics, hindi din kami yung nagka-come up originally. Paano po ba yung proseso sa mga schools nyo? Do you assign, assign a topic or do the students come up with the topics? Okay, based on current or phenomenon. So kung ano yung na-obserbahan siguro nila, by their line of senior high school track, they mm-hmm. identify a topic to work on. Okay, so uh, this is also quite... quite encouraging na sila po ang nagi oh either way so siguro meron ding path na yung teacher yung nag-iisip for my class i introduce po the first national research agenda and they develop their topic. okay that's very important but then to be honest okay po yung siguro where we start is ay nakakatawa na may itong mga gurong to <laughs> may umaabot na si SDG okay that's that's very encouraging okay um siguro po ano um kudos to all of you Uh, these are all great approaches po. So, okay. So, unang-una, it is very important that students pursue a topic that they're interested. But then, lalagyan po natin ng caveat yan. As research advisors, um, that's encourage for them to pursue their areas of interest. But then, also very important po na kailangan may nakatali dyan na relevance. Ano? And paano ba natin may establish yung relevance? So, Actually, para sabi ko, okay, there's a couple of ways by which you can actually do this. So, dapat, you begin with the end in mind. So, yung, yung mind mapping. So, meron kang idea ngayon, but then you also have to be able to visualize what the outcome is. So, medyo sasabihin na, sir, medyo, ano, medyo kinukontradict mo yung sinabi mo kanina na, don't be output-oriented. That still holds true. Okay? So, you're gonna perform research What I was just trying to say is you should welcome the outcome. So you should have you, you should begin with that in mind. Dapat alam mo kung ano yung intended result mo. But then in practicing research, pwedeng hindi mo yun makuha. Magkaiba po yung mag, magkaiba po yun. So mind mapping is say for example, if you want to pursue research like uh, along the line like within the health field, um dapat klaro rin sa iyo saan ba to mapupunta? Hindi naman yun napaka-broad na ay gusto ko lang mag-research on health. Ayan. Oh yeah, for example, we give general topics based on UN SDG. So even like from from that perspective po, okay, like SDGs, meron silang themes, but then those themes are still like fairly broad. So as if you're advising po, siguro i-lead natin yung mga students sa what what specific element or aspect of that SDG, SDG do you want to work on? Okay. So dito na po papasok yung in the context of the Philippines. Kung hindi niyo po alam kung saan kayo pupunta, um, regularly, uh, the Department of Science and Technology rolls out what we call a harmonized national research and development agenda. So ito po yung set of focus areas that um, our government um, identifies um, to be in need of critical research and development activities. So kung yung mga estudyante nyo po could, would end up identifying topics along or within these areas, medyo din po kayo makaka, mapapataas nyo po yung probability that the ideas that they are gonna come up with have social relevance. Kung baga may kapupuntahan talaga yung kanilang research effort. So, gamitin po natin itong mga guidance na to. And then SG, SDG, that's also like a very important set of guidance kasi that's a global uh, initiative. No? So, those are um, global uh, themes that we need to tackle from a research and development perspective rin po kasi yun po yung key para lahat ng tao sa buong mundo can enjoy a very high quality of life. All right. Okay. So, project ideation. So, ang gusto ko lang din pong um, i-highlight sa ating mga teachers dito po is that, okay, when you ideate, lalong-lalo na sa high school level, di ba yung concern nyo po kanina ay, ay, wala po kaming gamit. Wala po, hindi po namin masyado naiintindihan ng context. So, kaya po namin... inuulit-ulit kanina na okay lang na ang research na gagawin ng mga estudyante nyo ay simple. 
just because we also acknowledge that meron din pong limitation when it comes to resources. Actually, kahit po sa mga mayayamang bansa, wala naman pong research group na unlimited ang funding. So what's very important that you are also able to teach your students is that when they form their ideas and they make plans to implement their project, they also have to learn the skills of pre preparing or identifying a scope. And yung scope na yun should be based on their skill level. Okay? So meaning, kung nasa high school level ka, at yung research na gusto mong gawin will require a PhD skills, medyo hindi po compatible ang inyong, ang inyong tinatarget sa inyong kakayahan. So, medyo i-adjust po natin yan. Or if not, you have to seek guidance or the expertise of those who are experts in the field. Ayan. Resources, very important rin po. Kung ang gamit po na kailangan nyo ay nasa, nasa Maynila at kayo po ay nasa Mindanao, baka po you might have to adjust your research topic and uh, research questions to tackle into a scope that is, again, as I said, actionable. Dapat kaya nyo i-implement yung mga binabalak ninyo um, as part of your research. All right. Medyo yung mouse ko ay ano. Okay. And then dito rin po, yung question kanina na, Sir, paano ko po ma-assure na yung topic na pinipili namin ay may relevance? For example, kapag hindi part ng DOST's National Research Agenda, kapag hindi part ng SDG, paano po namin malalaman? So, an approach to identifying a, pro a research problem to tackle na gusto niyo pong may relevance is by practicing design thinking. So, ano ba itong design thinking? So, um, design thinking is a non-linear and iterative process that your students can implement to first like understand the need or to understand the problem. And then more importantly, talk to people or stakeholders who are faced with that problem and then design a study or a set of solutions based on what they learn from those stakeholders. So medyo, medyo masyadong, ano, medyo masyadong uh, generic yung pagkakadefine ko dyan. Pero the best way to do this is by tackling an example. So for example, kung kayo po ay nasa isang komunidad that is quite agricultural in nature and, and nagkaroon ng call yung government yun na ay Ano po, meron po ka kaming mga resources na i-deploy para po masuportahan natin yung mga pangangailangan na ating mga magsasaka. And sinabi nila, oh, may magbibigay kami ng pondo sa mga makakagawa ng um, uh, makakakamap ng solutions para ma maiwasan yung pagkapeste ng mga manok sa barangay or sa pagka, um, pagkakaroon ng sakit ng palay sa ating lugar. What you do with design thinking is, you don't go straight to the books na yung problem mo is local, pero ang, ang, ang gagawin mo, pupunta ka sa Google, sa Google Scholar, magbabasa ka lang ng papers, and yung solution na ipopropose mo is based lang dun sa nabasa mo. Sometimes, the best approach is you immerse yourself, you go to the farming communities, you observe, and you talk to the farmers, for example. At kapag naging klaro na sa'yo kung ano yung challenges and problema ng mga farmers, that is actually how you formulate your research questions. Ano ba yung mga challenges nila? Ano ba yung uh, gaps sa kanilang sistema? Ano ba yung mga problema nila na pwede kong solusyonan? And kapag na-identify nyo na yun, that's when you go and um, look uh, and search the literature for potential solutions or studies uh, that you can actually take inspiration from to come up with an answer to a local problem. Yun po yun. So sometimes you have to immerse yourself first and really observe before you go to the literature and maghanap ng solution. Kasi ang problem po kasi minsan na ginagawa natin, we think we know what they need without really asking the stakeholders kung ano pa talaga yung pangailangan nila. That is design thinking. You go to your intended end user you ask them what they need. You ask them kung ano ba yung kapasidad nila. And then you come up with a solution. And to be honest, this is actually 
a very impactful way of doing research and development. Because you are really designing the research based on an existing and clearly understood challenge. Okay. And this is iterative because sometimes yung, ito pong design thinking process, you talk, you understand, you do research, you come up with a plan. Yung pagpa-plan na po hindi siya down to perfection, up to perfection. Ang ginagawa mo, kapag meron ka ng basic idea, you implement it with minimal resources. And then as you test it, marirealize mo o ano yung kulang, ano yung magandang um, elements or ano yung advantages nitong solution po. And then as you learn, as you, you do it iteratively until you come up with the best solution. Ayan. Ito po yung medyo mabilis na approach sa pag-solve ng problem or sa pag-perform ng research. Alright. So it requires agility. Okay. Five-minute question. Do you have questions about what we just discussed? Merong isang question, Jeff. Which one what is the difference between capstone project or scientific research? Okay, I will also have to say this. Yung capstone project po, ngayon ko lang siya na-encounter. Yun yung tinatawag po ng mga uh, sa, sa atin sa Pilipinas, sa education system, sa, sa research, um, noong nag-K-12. Um, but then I think in, it based sa understanding ko, parang parehas lang din po kasi yun. Iba lang yung pagkakatawag. Siguro po, more general lang yun kasi di ba may iba-ibang strand. Baka po, um, ay, yung, yung, yung research kasi, yung scientific research um, na specify sa system. But somebody please correct me if I am wrong. Ayan po. How do you cite those personal observations in the paper? You know what? I actually po, you can you can you can say that. Yeah, we actually visited this particular area and interviewed like 10 farmers or 10 fisher fisher folks. And then ito yung uh, mga naging uh, na, naging sagot nila. And then you for, perhaps you also did your own investigation. You took pictures, ito yung sakit ng palay. There's not alam nyo po yung observations na yan. Siguro ito po yung medyo challenge rin. Kasi when when coming up with the conceptual framework or justification for what we're doing, ang naiis, nasanay po tayo na kailangan huhugutin natin yan sa reference paper. If you yeah, can, but then I, I do that a lot. So I at the end of my sentence or statement, meron akong parenthesis first come, personal communication. Yes, yes. And it is accepted. Yeah, it's accepted. Yes, hindi po nyo kailangan lagi huhugutin yan sa peer-reviewed journal. And also, nako na trigger po ako. <laughs> Naalala ko na naman kasi merong mga teachers sa Pilipinas na nagre-require na yung basis for the information that students would use in to to contextualize their research na dapat uh, within the last 5 years. Mali po 'yun. Eh paano? Madi, yung pong mga nagawa ni Einstein ay eh, older than 5 years. Invalidated na po pa 'yun. Wag po tayong ganun. Medyo mali po yung konteksto na yun. Minsan po, merong 200-year-old na established fundamental knowledge that remains true to this day. Exactly. Hindi ko po alam kung saan yun napulot ng mga kasamahan natin, pero palagi po namin yung na-encounter in trainings like this na there are institutions or educators requiring na within the last five years. Parang sabi, parang, if for as long as the body of knowledge is not disproved, that will remain valid. That can be used to contextualize. But in my field, yeah. Yes. In my field, we always do review of lit. So it always comes like, I mean, start from 50 years ago. This is yep. what happened. And now this is what it is. Yep. Okay. So, okay. So thanks for the clarification, po, sir. Pero siguro po, uh, I'm hoping that yung teachers dapat maano nila yan, eh, contextualize nila that for educational research lang yan. Ano po? When I wrote my thesis last 10 years yung requirement namin, Ma'am Je uh, Ma Jenny, wag po niyong paniwala. <laughs> I mean, it's quite unfortunate, I have to say. Ito po, medyo uh, nakaka-frustrate po kasi marinig to. Kasi kapag ganun po yung naturo, I'm hoping po wag niyo po yung i-apply sa mga estudyante niyo. Kasi kapag tinuro niyo po yun, your students might be missing out on a lot of very solid um, body of work na mas matagal sa 5 or 10 year period. And some and one very important thing rin po, 
high quality review of literature can save you years worth of work and it will also save you or prevent you from doing the wrong experiments. Exactly. Yeah. Usually po, 10 years po. Medyo baguhin na po natin yan kahit po 100 years. Like I said, ang gawitin niyo pong analogy to challenge your teachers ay yun po bang ginawa ni Einstein? Hindi na po ba natin pananiniwalaan? So, ganun nyo lang po yan sagutin. 